Hi, I'm Dave Rome, tech editor at Cycling Tips, and I'm here in Sedona, Arizona on the Cycling Tips gravel bike field test to test this, the BMC Urs 3. This is a bike with two names. It's the unrestricted or the Urs. Either one works, but what you need to know is it's BMC's first real entry into the gravel bike world. It's the love child between the BMC Team Elite 01, their World Cup winning hardtail, and their do-everything road bike, the Road Machine. From the mountain bike side, the Urs takes BMC's MTT design, basically an elastomer suspension, which aims to grab flex from the rear end and take the edge off of the bumps and add a little bit of traction in the process. The geometry on this is extremely progressive. It has a 70 degree head angle and an extremely long front center. With that, BMC then use a very short stem to bring the effective reach back into check. And that whole thinking is borrowed directly from the mountain bike world. Literally any trail bike of the last five years has used this thinking. And it's around the idea of adding a whole lot of high speed stability while still keeping the low speed handling in check. From the road, the Urs borrows BMC's integrated cabling system, which directs the cables along the bottom of the handlebar into the base of the stem and then down the sides of a flattened steerer tube and into the frame. It's quite an easy system to work with as the cables don't go through the stem, but rather they sit beneath it and then are covered by a cap. On this model, it has mechanical shifting and the system can't handle the mechanical shifting inside, so they keep that wire outside while the brake hoses are kept internal. Out back, the Urs borrows the same seat post from the road machine, which is a D-shaped carbon seat post designed to flex, but is really quite clever. The front radius of the seat post matches a 27.2 millimeter round seat post. And what that means is just with a simple wedge, you can actually fit a dropper seat post to this frame. Like any good gravel bike, the Urs is covered in mounts. You've got mounts on the top tube, mounts in the front triangle, but most importantly, you've got mounts for fenders, and there's also little secret mounts that can take a rear rack too. In addition to that, there's also these really clever fork bumpers on the front, something we haven't seen with any other gravel bike to date. And the idea with that is, is when you take the front wheel off and you wanna put the bike down in the car park or in the back of your car, you can safely do so without worrying about scratching the paint or damaging the carbon. The Urs has room for up to a 700 by 45 millimeter tire, and it does that while retaining a fairly short 425 millimeter chainstay. However, the trade-off there is that this bike cannot take a front derailleur. This is a one by only frame. There are four models in the BMC Urs range, ranging from US $3,200 all the way up to $9,500. This one is the BMC Urs 3. It sells for $4,300 and it features a full Shimano GRX group set, Mavic wheels, and an Eastern cockpit. This bike weighs 9.12 kilograms with the Control Continental tires, which is a pretty respectable weight given the mid-range spec on this bike. The BMC Urs is actually a bike I've tested before. I was at the launch of this bike in Switzerland, but now I'm keen to do some back-to-back -back testing and spend a whole lot more time on it. Let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, we have now been riding all these gravel bikes for a week here in Sedona, and now we are treating ourselves to a little bit of a refreshment at the Sedona Beer Company. Dave, you have a nice refreshing beer. Mm-hmm. I unfortunately am now drinking green tea and honey because my voice is shot because I'm allergic to something out here and I no longer have a voice. But we are still here to talk about another one of the very interesting bikes that we had here, the BMC Unrestricted or URS3. Dave, what did you like about this bike? This bike is one of the better mounted bikes we've ridden. It is certainly the most comfortable rigid bike we have on test. Uh, it is quite progressive. It has uh, a feature that we loved on the Evil, which is the long front sensor with the short stem. Uh, BMC arguably did that first. Uh, and it has a geometry that is still fairly sporty in its ways. So it's not quite as steep in the front end as many gravel bikes. It's a 70 degree head angle, uh, but it does well in a variety of terrain. Yeah, I mean, I, I found myself really pretty instantly comfortable on this bike. Um, I mean, I think we, we both have pretty strong mountain bike backgrounds. And I think when you ride this bike more with a mountain bike mentality than a roadie mentality or, uh, or a gravel bike mentality, 
I feel like that bike really comes into its own because yeah, you do have that little bit of sort of micro suspension in the back. I think, what did they claim, 15, 20 millimeters or yeah. something? Yeah. Um, but what really surprised me was how comfortable the front end was. That I really wasn't expecting. Um, so overall, it actually felt really surprisingly balanced. Uh, seated comfort's also worth noting. I mean, we've spoken about the comfort, but the combination of that MTT uh, elastomer design in the rear end plus the uh, D-shaped seat post that they're using, it really does let you just sit and pedal through stuff where other bikes would have us probably getting out of the saddle. Yeah, I mean, we didn't do timed laps here or anything, but I would bet that in a lot of situations, especially on a rougher section of gravel road or even trail single track, that this was probably one of the faster bikes that we had yeah. on there just because you could stay seated and keep the power down. Yeah. I mean, I suddenly felt less fatigued from riding that bike than I did coming off some of the others around here. Um, um, this was also one of the lighter bikes that we had too. I mean, despite having that little micro suspension in the back, I mean, it's a really surprisingly light frame, right? Yeah, light and stiff. Like it's, it's stiff under power and that lightness just, you know, allows you just to accelerate the bike as you wish. Um, it does feel quite racy in that regard. So Dave, what was the tire clearance on this bike again? Uh, it can fit up to a 700 by 45 millimeter tire. Uh, so, you know, our tires probably ran a little bit on the narrow side of 40 mil. So there's plenty of space there. However, that tire clearance does come with the limitation of no front derailleur. So there's no chance of fitting a front derailleur to this bike. It's one by only, which kind of feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah, because it did feel like for as much capability as the rest of the bike has, I mean, there were times when we were kind of like, ah, oh, this bike could be even better if you had like another really low fast knob tire in like a higher volume 45 or 47. And I feel like at that point, that bike would absolutely rip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. It, it seems like one of the ways that BMC may have gotten some additional comfort up front, maybe have something to do with that integrated cockpit, you think? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, that, that integrated cockpit that they use, the exact same design that's used on their road machine and a few other road bikes of theirs. Uh, and it basically, it flattens the steerer tube so that they can run the cables down the side of it. Um, through the bearings in the head tube, uh, and it's quite possible that that's allowing a little bit more flex in the system. We're testing one of the lower end models, which has an external shift cable on the outside. Uh, but you know, if you had a DI2 version of that, or even a, an electronic, a uh, wireless electronic version, you wouldn't actually see a cable coming from the handlebar. It's, it's a very, very clean looking bike. What about downsides on this frame? I mean, we talked a little bit about the fact that you have to run a one by, but I mean, yeah, BMC does seem to have made a few compromises in getting the performance here that we get. So what are those? Yeah, so I mean, you've got one by is for me, that's the biggest issue, the most, the one that's really going to impact a lot of people. The other one's just the fact that this frame requires quite a number of proprietary components. So from the seat post, the stem, uh, the fork even, you know, like there's just quite a number of parts here that you're going to be locked into BMC's own components if you do wish to upgrade. And, and I am definitely not a fan of wedge type seat post binders at all, but I will say that this one didn't creak, it didn't slip. I mean, the way that they've designed the thing is pretty clever because the more pressure you put down on the seat post, the tighter it gets. So I feel like they did a pretty good job there. It's really good, yeah. Um, but one other thing with that MTT rear suspension system, uh, we should remind people that that is a wear item. So it is going to require some maintenance, but it's also not going to last forever. Yeah, so really anything that moves is going to be a wear item. And this bike is not going to be the most set and forget thing out there. Uh, BMC themselves, I think, recommends servicing it annually. Um, there are bushings in there that, that slide on. Uh, it's quite easy to service, but it is a service component. And I feel like in a dry environment, like you know, we're up here in Zenona in the desert, any place where you have a lot of that really, really fine moon dust, if that can get in there, that'll, that'll tend to kind of dry it out and make it kind of squeak and creak a little bit more back there. So something to keep in mind, but it is pretty simple to do. So that's a plus. I mean, BMC was pretty progressive here in making that really, really long front end. I mean, this bike has a 50 mil stem on it. Yes. It does still feel like to me, like they could have gone a little bit further still, like maybe slacking out the front end a little bit. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that? Yeah, I think having ridden the, the Evil and seeing just how far they pushed the head angle on that bike, I think, uh, there's room to find a middle ground. There's a, there's a happy place in between what the BMC is and where the evil's at. I think if BMC added even half a degree or even a full degree, maybe 69 degree head angle, uh, that would make this bike 
really great in a huge variety of terrain without actually impacting too much on how it climbs. Right, or even if they had worked in a little bit more tire clearance, because if you were to put a bigger tire on there, especially up front, that would also effectively slow down the steering a little bit. It would, yeah. Dave, what did we think about the spec? Yeah, the spec, it's not too different from a lot of the other gravel bikes we're testing. So we've got Shimano GRX on it, which really just works. I mean, that's been a consistent theme across most of the bikes that we have here. I mean, it, with this, again, this was not by intent, but 12 of the 13 bikes that we have here have some level of GRX or Shimano on it, and only one bike had SRAM. But of all the GRX bikes, I mean, GRX 400, 600, 800, I mean, yes, they do vary in weight, but in terms of how they feel in your hands, they were all the same, which was, you know, super reliable, generally very smooth and consistent. It was two thumbs up. Yeah. And those uh, Mavic wheels on there, that was the only bike that we had on test with the Mavic wheels. What model is that that we've got uh, on there? Those are the All Roads. Mavic does get kind of a bad rap. And in fairness, I mean, there was a pretty lengthy period of time where they were pretty off the back in terms of you know, kind of how up to date they were with their product line. But I really do feel like in the last couple of years, they've stepped things up a lot and the all road system is really, really solid. Yeah, I think overall the spec finds a really good balance of weight and reliability. Uh, and they've done some really nice things. Like even though their handlebar system uses, you know, integrated cables, it uses a completely normal handlebar. They've got an Eastern handlebar on there now, feels nice. You know, there's very little I'd want to change in that bike. Oh, one thing I definitely wouldn't change, and I kind of wish that some of these other bikes did have, is a uh, BMC was the only company here to put a 180 millimeter front rotor on the bike, which, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could argue that you don't really need it on a gravel bike, but I would say that when you have a bike that is this comfortable and capable of going really fast on rougher terrain, it's really nice to have that extra braking power up front. So kudos to BMC for doing that. Well, that's what we thought of the 2020 BMC URS Unrestricted 3. For more videos from the Cycling Tips Gravel Bike Field Test, make sure to hit subscribe and stay tuned for more coming soon.